Hi everyone! Welcome back to Money and Chi. And kung mapapansin nyo, meron na tayong ring light! <laughs> That's because we reached 6,000 subscribers and thank you so much guys. Super thank you for believing in our channel and subscribing. Okay, so um, super thank you talaga. And of course, I would also like to say Merry Christmas and Happy New Year to all of you. I know um, this is a time when you should be with your family. So hopefully... You'll watch this after the holidays, of course, when the market opens again. So hopefully, masaya kayo sa pamilya nyo. And kung hindi man, let's pray for fresh beginnings and new stuff, okay? This week, we will be talking about one thing that I'm sure lahat tayo kating katina. And that is traveling. So today... We will not talk about traveling, but a stock that is related to traveling, which is Cebu Pacific. Yay! Sino dito yung gusto na travel ngayon din? I am sure marami sa inyo. So anyway, guys, uh, before we actually start our analysis, I would like to invite you to take the free course of Stocks Ed. You can get it from StocksEd.com and go to the courses and take that free course. Okay, it's for you to learn something new, lalo na kung beginners kayo, di ba? And of course, if you would like to take the paid courses, you can use my, my code. It's called Money and Chi. So just use that. But my recommendation is take first the free course so that you get to feel if you really want it before you purchase that. So... Take that free course. And of course, guys, you can also follow me on my social media accounts. You can see it somewhere there. I will put it there. And also, I have my Patreon account. If you want to be part of my community, you can join my Patreon account. You can get some perks there. Like, you can, I always post there my weekly portfolio. What I buy. Before I buy, sell them. I actually post it there. So you can also request some stocks to me. And I can do some evaluation before you actually buy it. The link is on the description box. Or you can comment below so I can reply to you. Okay? Anyways, if you're ready guys, let's start now. Everyone has a chance. And every big guy started small. Those are the words of Mr. John Gokongways. I am excited to talk about Cebu Pacific because this is one of the stocks that or company that is very close to my heart. And the reason for that is because I love traveling. And I, if you're part of my Instagram, you can see that I always travel. So um, even before I was able to afford traveling abroad, I was traveling around Philippines. And Cebu Pacific is my favorite airline to go to. Not just because, of course, it's super cheap. Like, especially kapag piece of air, hindi ka matutulog. Dahil antay mo talaga mag-1201 para makapag-book ka. So, ganun ako dati. And lagi yan, kapag ka burnout na burnout na ako sa work, I will always travel. And Cebu Pacific helped me to recover on those burnout days. And that's why I am so excited to talk about Cebu Pacific. Honestly, I don't think that I will be able to travel as much as I was able to before. If not because of John Gokong Way or at least the Gokong Ways disrupting the market, diba? Before, it was so expensive to travel. Napakahirap na, alam mo yun, makaalis. Or kahit local lang eh, diba? Sa so, anong gagawin mo? Sakay ka ng barko. <laughs> Pwede naman, di ba? Mata mahirap lang at matagal. Pero, unang travel ko outside Philippines is Korea. And, alam nyo ba kung magkano yung binayaran ko? 3,000 for the airfare. 3,000. Balikan na. Round trip. Maka-achieve mo ba yun? Kasi, pagpal, di ba? 15,000 balikan. So, imagine, airfare pa lang 15,000 na. So, baka abutin ako ng isang taon bago maging ready. That's the business of Gokong Ways. Eh. They make something affordable for people. And that's why I always think that they are a market disruptor. Not on the technology side, ha, but more on the uh, business model. And hindi lang yan yung dinestrop na. I'll, I'll go through that later on when we go to the management side. Alam mo yun, sobrang thankful ako sa stock na to, sa company na to, Cebu Pacific, for making it affordable for Filipinos para makapag-travel tayo, ma-enjoy ma natin ang Pilipinas at 
labas ang Pilipinas. Bago pa mapatagal yung pagkukwento ko ha, let's start now with our qualitative analysis of the A analysis portion. Okay? So first of all, let's look at the um, organizational chart of Cebu Pacific Air. So ano ba yung under Cebu Pacific? So as you can see, uh, wag mo nang tingnan yung sa right side, pero Cebu Pacific Air Inc., 66.15% owned by the Kokong Waste. The rest is publicly traded, no? And then, 100% of Sebgo, or the, I think this is the Cargo. The next thing that we will talk about is the business model. So, paano ba kumikita si Cebu Pacific, diba? So, first is passenger. So, kumikita sila sa passenger, and 72% of their earnings is from that, no? 6% is from Cargo. Cargo, ito yung mga shipping, mga ganyan. So, and ancillary is 12%. So, yung ancillary, ito yung mga excess baggage, in-flight sales, and rebooking, and cancellation, mga ganyan. So, yun yung other or ancillary charges. 12% yun. Okay, the rest is are the cost. So, makita nyo naman dito, ba? So, may flying operations, depreciation, um, amortization, aircraft, and traffic servicing, repairs, and maintenance, reservation and sales, passenger service, aircraft and engine lease, and general and administrative. So, yun yung mga major costs ni um, Cebu Pacific. Of course, one of the things when you do qualitative analysis is you have to feel or remember your experience using their services, diba? So, ngayon, I'm share ko sa inyo yung mga um, pros and cons na napansin ko when I use Cebu Pacific, diba? So, first of course, syempre, ano bang pros? Diba, napaka good talaga in terms of cheapness, talagang cheap siya, lalo na kung uh, piece of fare. Ngayon, kung hindi siya piece of fare, doon na medyo mahal, diba? Na kung mapapansin nyo kung agad-agara ng booking, minsan mas mahal pa siya kaysa sa ibang airlines. So, binubook mo talaga si Cebu Pacific for the um, sales. Other than that, medyo pricey siya. Um, what else? So, in terms of flight, alam naman natin laging delayed siya, diba? So, tandaan nyo lang, kapag lumagpas ng 3 hours, yung delay, may libre kayong chicken joy, okay? Huwag nyo kakalimutan yun. Um, hindi ko sure kung meron pa ngayon, pero maraming beses ako nakakain ng chicken joy. So, imagine nyo na lang kung ilang beses ako na-delay sa Cebu Pacific. And not because I'm just traveling. Baka sabihin nyo, napaka-gala ko naman. Um, kasama sa work ko yun. So, sa work ko kasi, kailangan ko mag-travel papunta sa ibang probinsya para i-check kung meron bang tubig yung river para sa hydro projects. So, the best time to actually uh, fly in Cebu Pacific is yung super early in the morning or yung super late ng gabi para hindi na masyadong delayed yung flights. Kaso, ang problema doon, hindi ka makaka-join doon sa in-flight game nila. <laughs> na ang dami ko na yata na panalunan kasi di ba may quiz bi sila sa ano sa flight so every time nangyari yun syempre ako ak, talagang sumasali ako dyan join ako dyan and marami na ako na panalunan na ano freebies galing sa <laughs> Cebu Pacific so um, kagandahan kasi no di ba yung pag flight mo yung question is almost the same pagka pabalik ka basta same month okay pagka ang flight uh, ang fly out mo is January, tapos ang flyback mo is February. So, may iba na yung question. So, if I were you, ano, um, dapat within the same month. Para pareho yung question. And, syempre, mauna ka sa pagsagot, ba? So, yun yung favorite ko na <laughs> sa part pa sa, ano, sa Cebu Pacific. Yung food, hindi ko talaga siya gusto. Sa totoo lang, hindi ko alam kung na-try nyo na yung food nung sa Cebu Pacific. As much as possible, kapag ka magta-travel ako, hindi ako bumibili ng pagkain sa Cebu Pacific. Nagbabaon ako talaga. Um, bibili ako sa Jollibee or sa McDo or whatever. Tapos, dadaling ko sa flight. Except sa, ano, ba sa Australia kasi bawal magdala ng food talaga. Pero, in any other flight, magbabaon ako kasi hindi talaga siya masarap. One time, 
yung <laughs> bumili ako nung in-flight food nila. Yung kanin, parang sobrang mamasama. Sana hindi ko maintindihan. Hindi ako talaga nag-enjoy. So, ewan ko kung iba yung experience nyo. Hindi lang talaga ako nag-enjoy sa food. So, may mga airlines na gusto ko yung food. Kunyari, yung Air Asia, okay yung food nila, yung PAL. So, super nice yung food nila. Except dun sa ano, yung mga short flight. Pag long flight, masarap yung food ng PAL. Pero sa Cebu Pacific, hindi masyado. Um... In terms of pilots, yung pag-fly-fly nila, okay naman ako sa Cebu Pacific. I don't remember any instance na nas natakot ako pag-land uh, at saka pag-fly pag, pag out. Unlike dati, nung merong ano, yung may cheap, may cheap airline pa si PAL, ano tawag doon yung PAL Express? Grabe yun yung sa may corona nun, pag-land niya, parang na-vibrate ng todo yung utak mo na. So, wala naman akong gano'ng experience sa Cebu Pacific. Napaka-smooth ng landing at saka fly-fly niya. So, okay ako doon. Napakabait din ng mga uh, flight attendants nila. Although, pal din naman. Lahat, halos lahat naman ng flight attendants, I think okay naman. Wala akong naging issue. Cebu Pacific, of course. That includes them. Anyways, may kukwento na ako sa inyo, guys. Nung college kasi ako, muntik na akong mag-stop ng studies kasi nga, di ba, nagkaroon ng financial crisis and na-hit din yung parents ko, no? So, dumating yung point nung third year college ako na pinapastop na ako mag-aral nung nanay ko kasi nga, um, wala na kami yung pera pang pang ano, pang tuition fee. So, one of the things na ginawa ko nun is, nag-apply ako sa Cebu Pacific. So, nung pag-apply ko sa Cebu Pacific, kapag nag-apply ka pala as flight attendant, kailangan pack na pack yung makeup mo. Kasi, alaala ko nun na, nag-foundation naman ako, nag-makeup naman ako ng bahagya. Hindi lang yung intense na, ano, di ba nagpa-parlor, ganyan. Nag-makeup lang ako ng bahagya sa akin. So, nagpunta ako doon, nagdala ako ng resume ko. Tapos, pag-submit ko, sabi sa akin nung, ano, nung HR or nung receptionist doon, sabi, um, hindi po kami tumatagap nang hindi naka-makeup. Parang gusto ko sabihin, ah, naka-makeup na kasi ko. <laughs> Kulang pa ba? Kulang pa. Kailangan yata yung cake na, ano, yung punda, yung foundation na, ano, yung binabasa mo pa para kumapal talaga. So, I think yun yung requirement para maka, ano ka, maka, maging flight attendant ka. By the way, guys, kung mayroon kayong problem sa, ano nyo, kasi nung time na yon, hindi mo naman kailangan college graduate para maging flight attendant. Meron ka lang kailangan 36 units yata or ilang units yon. Basta, after mong maka matapos yung second year college, I think eligible ka na to be a flight attendant. So, yon. Those are one of the things that I did. And hindi ako naka- go through dun sa process na yun. So, hindi ako naging flight attendant. And, yun, buti na lang kasi, syempre, kapag nag-start ka na magtrabaho, tatama rin ka na mag-aral, ba diba? So, I did something else para makapag-aral ako at ma- ma-ano ko, <laughs> ma-achieve ko matapos yung pag-aaral ko, ba diba? So, yun yung one funny ko story and, yun nga, sa Cebu Pacific. Anyways, okay, yun. So, ano pa bang experience, um, customer experience na masasabi ko tungkol sa Cebu Pacific, yun lang, hindi sila nag, ano, for cancellation, for, um, rebooking. Pero kasi, um, hindi naman ako masyadong nagagalit doon kasi, syempre, mura na nga eh, di ba? <laughs> um, kung hindi mo kayang maano yung flight, then, sorry na lang, di ba? I, I think it's also to, to help them na lang din. For me, ah. Kasi, syempre, hindi naman nila kasalanan kung biglang hindi matutuloy yung flight mo. Although, it would be nicer if you can actually rebook things. Pero, ganun talaga, syempre. Kailangan din nila mag-survive sa business nila. So, sa akin, wala masyadong ano yun? Stress. Okay lang. Ganyan. <laughs> Anyways, next one, we'll talk about the management. So, ano bang meron sa management? So, every time na sumasakay ako sa Cebu Pacific, binabasa ko yung magazine nila, ba? Diba? So, lagi yung makikita doon si Lance Gokong Wei. Siya yung CEO ng ano, Cebu Pacific. And I think for me, ha, si Gokong Wei, at least si John Gokong Wei, yung, yung dad niya, is a visionary and a market disruptor. Market disruptor in not in a tech way but more of a business model way and it's because they make things affordable for Filipinos like us. Like, lalo na yung mga expensive things. Um, yung mga bagay na meron sila. Like, ewan ko naabutan yung sun cellular nung high school ako. Ang text, piso per text. 
Di ba ngayon naka-anly na kayo? So, ewan ko na abutan niyo yung time na piso lang yung, piso yung bawat text. Siyempre, high school ka, di ba? Bibigyan ka lang ng allowance ng parents mo. So, for me, ang allowance ko nun for text, like, for whole month, 300 pesos lang. So, kung, kung itatext niyo ako nun, hindi talaga ako nag-reply. Kung super importante lang yan, saka lang ako mag-reply. Kasi, syempre, kailangan meron akong enough Um, load para mag-reply sa mama ko tsaka papa ko kapag kakailangan nila akong i-text, di ba? Hindi pwedeng palaging nagte-text. Noong time na yun, syempre pa-college ka na, di ba? So, um, naalala ko noon, si Globe tsaka si Smart, nagbabalak silang gawin na 2 pesos per text ang bayad. Napaka mahal noon, grabe naman. Isang text, dalawang piso. And that was 2,000 2005, oo. Tapos, 2 pesos per text. Intense, di ba? Grabe sa mahal. Parang, kami noon natatakot na kami kasi nga, bakit ganun? Bakit sobrang mahal naman? Tapos, dumating si Sun Cellular, which is Gokong Way. And sila yung nagpauso ng only text, only call, for one week, ganyan. So, nung time na yon, dapat magpasalamat sa akin si Sun Cellular, ha? Kasi marami akong napakonvert from smart. Nagpalit na ako ng Sun Cellular. Kasi, yun nga, mas mura siya, di ba? So, kung gusto mo akong makatext, gusto mo akong mag-reply sa'yo, lalo na kung may group assignment, ganyan, kailangan mag ka. Kasi kung hindi, hindi kita na-replyan. Kasi sun, unlimited lang siya, sun to sun, di ba? Walang sun to globe, sun to smart, ganyan. So, nung time na yun, sabi ko, abahala kayo sa buhay nyo. Hindi, hindi ko kayo kakausapin. <laughs> hindi kayo magsasun. So, I think marami akong friends sa nagpa-convert to sun because of me. So, you have to thank me, sun, for that. <laughs> for helping your business grow, di ba? <laughs> Anyways, so, yun. So, sila yung nag-disrupt nun. And those are the things, yun yung unang dinisrupt nila, di ba? Yung telecommunication industry. And that's why I'm so, from from that moment on, talagang I support their businesses, di ba? URC, um, that's one of my favorite stocks to, tra to trade as well. And mahilig din ako sa C2, mga ganyan. And of course, dinisrupt din nila yung market ng Um, traveling, which is yung airlines nga through Cebu Pacific or cheap flights, ba? Diba? So, yun yung mga bagay na dinisrop nila. Imagine mo if they're not there, kung walang go, kung way. Hindi, ano nang nangyari sa atin, ba? Diba? Napakamahal na. And, yun nga, ba? Diba? May mga monopoly, oligopoly. So, because of that, sila yung mga, syempre, nagtitake advantage nung ng consumers sa pataas ang napataas ng presyo. Eh, pwede naman palang murahan, but hindi minurahan, di ba? So, mapapamura ka na lang sa sa, ano, eh, sa presyo. Pero, yun na nga ang kagandahan sa Gokong Wee. So, then, of course, they earn something from us, di ba? That's still business. Pero, what's good is, they don't take advantage of the consumers, but actually give um, consumers or poor Filipinos or middle class the chance to experience these things, you know, communication, travel, and yeah, paulit-ulit ako, no? Other thing is, of course, let's move on to the sustainability. So, I like, um, as you know, airlines or traveling is not really sustainable in a sense, kasi, of course, of the carbon emission, syempre, maraming, alam mo yun, maraming oil ang kailangan mo, or fuel for the airplane to fly, fly. So, yun yung one of the things na, syempre, you have to consider as well. Pero good thing about Cebu Pacific, even na cheap airlines sila, they actually try their best to be sustainable. So, they got new um, fuel um, efficient airplanes para mas less yung emissions nila. So, that's a good thing. I hope someday, pwede ka magbayad para, alam mo yun. Kasi some of the airlines, like, when I was in Australia, yung... I forgot the name of the airline, pero cheap din yun. Sinakyan ko yun. You can pay para mag... Yun sa emission mo, sa carbon emission mo. Para maging ano siya, balance siya, or maging neutral ka. So, yung pag nagbayad ka, magtatanim sila. Parang ganun. So, sana may ganun din sa Cebu Pacific. Para mas feel ko na, alam mo yun, hindi masyadong <laughs> bad for the environment yung bisyo ko. Okay? Okay now, so let's move on to the quantitative analysis. Okay, so now we're looking at 
five year financial highlights of Cebu Pacific. And as you can see, let's focus first on the earnings. So for 2015 to 2016, it the uh, earnings went up double, almost double, no. And then on 2017, it went down. And then it went down even further in 2018. Tapos, on 2019, it went up more than double as well. So as you can see, the earnings is not very consistent. Which is something that is not very good in a sense in terms of net income. Of course, that goes to the dividend. That's why this is not very good. But if you look at the sales or the revenue, actually the sales is going up consistently from year to year. No, so the problem with this one, as you can see, is more on the cost, operational cost. And probably this is because of the fuel prices. Because as we know from the past years, the fuel prices or oil actually is very unstable it goes up and down very very crazily and so um i think they're hit on that and i'm not sure if they actually do hedging for the oil but it's difficult because that's one of the major uh, costs for them eh? so yun. um of course the price to earning uh pe ratio is going down then naman because of uh, the prices of course the investors are selling and let's move on to the next one um here you can see the passenger carried for 20 from 2018 to 2019 actually grew to 11 percent which is good because it has been more filipinos are booking or flying ganyan. and then the second one is seat load factor so what is that i think this is more of like kung gaano ka puno yung aeroplano so most of the time it's 86 percent uh, um, puno, which is good, no, because you don't want na masha na empty naman. But this is 2019, ha, just so you know, guys. It's not 2020. It's an entirely different story. Um, and then, then um, seats available, available seats is up by nine percent as well from 2017, which means that they're adding um, airplanes to add more seats. Of course, that will be additional on sales, which is good. And then we move on to this year. So as of end of September, Cebu Pacific's net loss has reached 18.69 billion, reversing last year's profit of 6.77 billion. As air passengers dropped 72 percent to 4.7 million, so that's actually huge. Um, because of this, actually they plan to have stocks rights offer. Um, with the amount of 250 million dollars it's already approved by the stockholders um, and they are also approved to issue a corporate bond to help them support this year's losses Ayan. okay guys so before we move on to the next part of the analysis please subscribe and hit the notification button para lagi kang updated sa ating mga new videos okay so let's move on to the Broker's recommendation! Doo -doo. Looking at the broker's recommendation, and this is from Call Financial. So, um, it was on November 16, pero this was already including yung 7 billion loss na love for this year. And they were saying that Cebu Pacific is fair valued at 42 per share. Okay, and right now it's 50.50, so medyo uh, overvalued siya according to call financials so what are the reasons why are they saying this because um, of course the net losses ganyan, and revenues decline on lower passenger volume and average fare and then they have a very tight cash position so they have strong ano kasi, yung cash burn nila is kind of high and i think they're only gonna survive until the end of the year and then it has to be like the mother company which is jgs i think will have to infuse cash now for them to survive kasi um they're kind of cash negative na um that's that's um called financial i think it's fairly analyzed kasi syempre it's really at a loss so so right now i think one of the reasons why it went up kasi uh they had 12 12 seat sale and i think that gave them some revenue to survive that's good for them kasi they had sales for 
December. That doesn't include this that naman in this analysis. So that's why the prices went up. And of course, of the sentiment as well of the investors, as soon as everyone is allowed to fly, um, syempre, one of the things na katingkatin naman talaga yung mga tao is to travel. So, they're w- definitely one of the industries or companies that will have a lot of sales after that because that's the time when people really wanted to travel okay guys so now that you know their broker's recommendation the next thing to do is the charting okay guys so we're looking at the chart of cebu pacific and if you look at this one it's actually uh the price is within the 200 ema and that's the current support that it has so as you can see from its previous uh, trades as well that's usually where it touches so right now as you can see this is the 50 ma no so once it crosses the the 200 then it's probably a good time to buy but we look at the macd as well so as you can see the macd um it's actually has a crossover so Medyo hindi pa siya maganda to enter as of the moment. But the RSI is in the middle naman. The momentum as well is getting stronger. So I, I think there would be some sell-off pa going forward before it actually, you know, rebounds. Uh, for the moment, of course, this is triggered because of the new strain of coronavirus. No? So if uh, there's no travel pa rin, then it's a big problem for Cebu Pacific for this year no and including for next year so it's not very good but once everything is okay so just remember guys if you want to invest in Cebu Pacific you have to enter before the news or before the global lockdown is ended so once everything everyone is allowed to travel like I said these are the stocks that will fly. So in the US, the Boeing the BA actually went up already. So hopefully uh, that will follow. Cebu Pacific will follow. So yun lang. Ayan guys. So hopefully you learned something new from me again today. And I just wanted to let you know guys. Of course, right now it's coronavirus. And you know naman that one of the industry that was hit the most is the tourism industry and of course the fly fly industry or flight industry so Cebu Pacific is actually super hit right now and good thing that they have a strong mother company which is Gokong Ways for them to actually help them for the meantime to survive the company you know so I I don't for me I, I honestly I, I invested on it but I don't recommend other people to invest as well. So first of all, as you know, like especially kapag ka na, na remove ng travel bans around the world, once COVID is out and can be cured or makaroon na ng vaccines and everything, of course the stocks of these companies will shoot up. Pero you know that fundamentally it will take one to two years before it actually can recover right so the, the reason why i'm buying this stock is to help them recover and they will probably have an sro or stock rights offering by next year and also uh, bond issue ones for for them to actually um, survive the pandemic and to recover their business diba? so uh cebu pacific will be profitable again in the future pero yun lang um just uh, caution for all of you, lalo na kung gusto nyo bumili ng Cebu Pacific, just be careful. And and if you want to invest in Cebu Pacific, know that it's for long term. So, it will take two, at least two years to recover. So, just remember that if you want to put your money into it. I'm not saying don't. Uh, I'm not saying yes. It's up to you. For me, I believe in the company. I believe that it has a future. It can still go through, you know, more and more Filipinos want to travel and I don't think anyone will stop. As soon as it's ready, I think everybody would actually travel. Because lalo na ngayon, di ba, hindi tayo travel ng matagal. And that's one of the reasons why I'm also putting my money into it. Pero yun nga, also to support the company. And because it helped me a lot. So I don't really mind losing money for now. It's not good investment advice. And I don't really give investment advice. This is my personal um support for the company because i don't want them to fail i don't want them to fail because i think 
a lot of Filipinos need them. A lot of Filipinos still want their services. So I want them to survive and that's why I'm putting my money into it. Okay, so um, yeah, I hope Hopefully guys, you learned something new today. If you haven't subscribed yet to my channel, please subscribe and hit the notification button. Don't forget to take your free online course in StocksEd.com. Um, take advantage of that. Super pinagirapan namin yan and that's for every Filipino. This topic, by the way, is requested by JC. So thank you for requesting this. Um, JC is part of my patrons. Hopefully you like this analysis of ours. Thank you as well to my patrons who also subscribe and helping me sustain this channel. <laughs> Super thank you guys for supporting. And starting January, I will do live video sessions as well. So hopefully you can join me there. Um, I'll post in my Instagram and Facebook the schedule, the time, so you can join me. And Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Bye! Hi everyone, welcome back to Money and Chi and today we will do a makeup tutorial. <laughs> Harsh yung pa lighting ni Mayor. Mas gusto ko pa rin yung natural light. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year!